Hello and welcome to the SciFest Movie Talk episode. So in this episode we continue our further journeys into the Wizarding World created by J.K. Rowling with the 2018 fantasy adventure Fantastic Beasts The Crimes of Grindelwald. Uh, the second movie in the now expanded Fantastic Beasts Arm of the Wizarding World franchise with this being the 10th movie in the series overall, as directed once again by David Yates, who now continues his legacy within the franchise with his sixth directorial entry into the series. Set once more before the events of the Harry Potter series, this time in 1927, the movie continues the adventures of Newt Charmander, never say his name, as played by Eddie Redmayne, luckily I can say his, a magi zoologist, um, who, following the events of the last movie, finds himself, somewhat reluctantly at first, tracking down a young wizard by the name of Credence Barebone, as played by Ezra Miller, who Newt learns is still alive following his ordeal and transformation in the previous entry. Credence has a power inside of him like nothing before seen, and a number of factions, including the diabolical and manipulative Gellert Grindelwald, as played by Johnny Depp, are looking to seek and claim Credence for their own ends. Something new is eager to ensure doesn't happen, regardless of the ultimate side Credence will take. Teaming up once again with Nomad Jacob Kowalski, as played by Dan Fogler, and an operative of the Magical Congress of the United States of America, Tina Goldstein, as played by Catherine Waterston, together they find themselves in France, where Credence has taken up travelling with the Circus Acanus, as he searches for his true birth parents, and a sense of where he belongs in this world. Grindelwald, on the other hand, has other plans for Credence and starts amassing his own followers after escaping custody during being transferred to England to face sentencing for his crimes. And in so starting a deadly revolution that threatens both Nomad and those of the Wizarding World who do not seek to follow him in his cause. With allegiances frayed and relationships tested, this journey back into the Wizarding World is fraught with danger once more, and only few dare to stand in the way and fight for what's right and just against Grindelwald's sinister and devastating intentions. Now, after I got so engrossed in the last movie, I must say I was beyond excited to learn that we had yet another chapter and outing with these amazing characters, and indeed even more fantastic beasts, especially as they had been set up exceptionally well in the last movie and had more than stood out on their own or, or, no, in the overall Wizarding World franchise. However, from a very promising start and very thrilling start, introducing us to Grindelwald as he escapes custody, the film very quickly sets into its own rut, reducing the pace somewhat and becoming overly complex, overly saturated and less focused on any kind of real endgame. To say I was disappointed with this instalment is an understatement. After everything we had been through in the entire Wizarding World, I won't go as far as to say it's a bad film, it has some brilliant moments for sure, you know, and it's still part of the Wizarding World franchise, and so it's all relative, you know? But as far as things go, it is the one so far in the series with the least focus, and the one for me which didn't bring the same kind of level of cohesion, connectivity and chemistry for any of its characters that we had kind of seen in the other entries of the series to date. Firstly, it completely messes with the character dynamics set up in the first movie, of which I had become so fond. We had spent time getting to know these characters, you know, who by the end of the movie had become fairly close, and certainly with the sparks and the promise of something more juicy still yet to come. The chemistry between Newt and Jacob, which was such a backbone and endearing quality of the first movie, felt forced and pretty lacking at times. Jacob, for as much as he, you know, again steals the show, was way underused here and just felt like he was tagging along rather than being more of a pivotal part of the plot. Newt and Tina's perceived chemistry is torn apart and reset following a misunderstanding that, quite frankly, like another of elements in this movie, 
seem to defer to the most extreme outcome, rather than somebody simply just talking to the other. It just didn't feel right to me, you know? And, and I know that's more of like a, of a personal preference than the movie itself, but the band of four, you know, gave us something to latch onto, to root for. And this instalment didn't seem to have much of that at all. And so the stakes never really seemed that high. Even though with Grindelwald, they were supposed to be terrifying, you know? Unlike Voldemort, who was slowly introduced piece by piece, you know? Grindelwald is just thrust at us, and we are expected to kind of fall in line with his villainy, just as a matter of say-so, you know? I mean, he is a villain, don't get me wrong, and a tyrant at that, but he's no Voldemort at this stage. Yet with very little to go on, we are to believe he is. I mean, no matter the atrocities, Voldemort had presence without even being on screen. Grindelwald? Well, who is he? It does go too dark too fast, involved in its own ramblings without any kind of satisfactory build-up or emotional payoff. Yes, the characters were great fun in the first movie, but we didn't really get to know them in much depth. You know, not enough to carry them, this movie forward in the way that it needed us to, you know? The way it executes its plot is very pretentious and very convoluted, when really, beauty has been in the simplicity of these movies, and how awestruck they have always made us feel. This is neither, and has, is simply nowhere near as fun as it should have been. I understand what the movie was trying to do, don't get me wrong, to act as a link between the events of the first movie and the setup required for the series going forward, but as a result, it really does feel like a placeholder, with no real substance to its kind of overall plot that would that we, you could call its own, you know? Very open-ended and overall relatively low stakes. Perhaps it will become more of an important movie as the series progresses. Time will tell. And I, I mean, like I say, I get what it was trying to do. You know, it was trying to do a lot. It had a lot of ground to cover and lay further groundwork for the series. But it tried to lay too much too soon, much being forced without any kind of real build-up or payoff in this movie specifically. Additionally, I find that whereas the first Fantastic Beats required, you know, little to no knowledge of the series, indeed it was handy, but not essential, you know, this relies heavily on many elements that led into the whole wizarding world itself. Whereas Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them paid some passing fan service to the world of Harry Potter, this feeds directly into and from it, which complicates things and removes the film away from the style and presence the first movie had on its own accord. This has got lost in the ether. This movie no longer stands on its own, and that has most definitely been a key feature of all of the entries in the entire Wizarding World franchise to date. But we do get the reintroduction of Dumbledore, this time in the form of his younger self, as played this time around by Jude Law, back when he was the Defence Against the Dark Arts teacher at Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry. Indeed, I believe the one who certainly survived the longest after taking on the doomed role, you know? And indeed, we do return to Hogwarts for a spell or two, which, you know, was a fanciful but delightful touch nonetheless. In fact, Law is a welcome addition to the cast and an inspired choice as a younger Dumbledore, you know, full of pep and real kind of passion for magic and teaching, and indeed already wise and very cunning, to say the least. And Law brings the required reverence to the role, as well as kind of this brilliant energy that you get. You, you know, you could certainly imagine Dumbledore having at this young age. We do indeed get even more fantastic beasts as well, as the name would suggest. Finally, and although they do feel somewhat more incidental in this instalment, and perhaps a little surplus, they are still magnificent, you know, and their inclusion for all intents and purposes still forms part of the overall search for credence. They just don't seem to have quite the same focus as they really should have, given the angle this part of the series was going for, you know, and what the first movie brought to the table. And indeed, one thing I can't deny is its level of world-building once again. 
whilst I don't think it's perhaps quite as immersive as we have seen from the overall series in the past, it was still great to see yet another magnificent city enter the magic fold, with some wonderful Parisian flair and a little insight into the French Ministry of Magic. Whilst also expanding on the law and the inner workings of the wizarding world as a whole, you know, once again. Overall, I must admit, of all the films in the series so far, this is the one I do find myself fading in and out of the most while I'm watching it. It is an indulgent movie that lacks the clear purpose of the others, having no real build-up or and a, you know, and a relatively low-stakes payoff feeling somewhat deflated by the end, like it's lost its spark when compared with its predecessor. That had quite a unique style, and, you know, this a bit of pizzazz, you know, it was what you needed. Whereas this feels much more convoluted for the sake of intertwining this series into the rest of the Wizarding World mythology, which I think was just way too early for this particular series. It seems to kind of hopscotch around to very little avail, mulching around a number of topics which I am sure will pay off later in the series, but just seemed overburdened in this instalment at this time. Perhaps my view will change as the series develops, you know, time will tell once again. You know, there have been plenty of films like this that have kind of ended up being the linchpin of a whole entire franchise, so it's not unheard of, you know? We'll see. Anyway. This brings me to the end of this episode. Many thanks for watching. I do hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, please leave a like. Please do hit that subscribe button for more movie reviews, trailer reactions and other movie related content. Absolutely loved having you here at Southwest Movie Talk and definitely love to have you back. Most of all, just thank you very much for watching. Goodbye.